the other interesting part about facilitation is you need to start with what is the purpose of your meeting, of your facilitation, of your collaboration, whatever it is you're doing with a group of people. There's nothing worse than sitting in a meeting where you think, oh, here we go again. You don't know why you're there. Maybe there hasn't even been an agenda distributed. And you think, oh my goodness, there's so much work on my desk. What the heck am I doing here? So we do spend a lot of time in dysfunctional meetings. And I think that um, uh, we do need to up our game when it comes to sitting in meetings and uh, getting results, getting groups to make solid decisions, etc. Again, one of my favorite anecdotes uh, for this is, uh, it, this is about really being attuned to the purpose of the meeting or the session and what people need and want. I was once hired by an executive director who said, you know, my team is so burnt out. I want them to really have a conversation about burnout, how to avoid it, how to do things differently and so on. So I came into the group of about 10 people and the first thing that happened after the executive director introduced me was she took a call and said, oh my goodness, there's an emergency, I have to go. So there I was left with a group of 10 people who were looking at me and I was looking at them. I brought a whole agenda on burnout and they said, you know what? Uh, we actually don't need a session on burnout. Our executive director needs a session on burnout. She is so overloaded that she's running hither and yon. So I thought to myself, well, there's no point in my going forward and teaching them or facilitating a conversation about burnout when they don't think they need it. So I tossed my agenda and I said to them, well, what do you want to talk about? And they wanted to talk about communication. So we just converted the whole session to a conversation on uh, communication. And it was one of my best sessions ever in terms of results and in terms of the satisfaction of the group. So those were a few examples of how you can really use uh, both the art and science of facilitation to, to really have the kinds of conversations, dialogue, meetings that will get the results that you want. So maybe that's enough of a tease uh, to say we all need uh, some of these uh, techniques. Uh, no matter what conversation you're in, whether it's work, home, and so on, I will say that this is not about clinical conversations, but they are really important um, ways of showing up in all kinds of roles. And even if you're not the facilitator, you can actually facilitate from the side if you understand what's happening and know what you're doing. So all around, this skill will not be wasted. Thanks.